The sun rises on the port of Zarzis, where the fish market has just opened. Shamsuddin is happy to be back at work. The months since his arrest have not been easy. After 14 years of rescuing migrants at sea, he found himself an accused smuggler. Shamsuddin and his crew spent a month in prison, but were able to return safely home thanks to the fishermen of Zarzis. They supported me. They mobilized to confront the Tunisian government, the Italian government, and their laws. This is why we are all a family here at the port. Over the past few years, saving lives at sea has almost become routine for fishermen in Zarzis, a common point of departure for illegal crossings to Italy. Shamsuddin and his colleagues have all received first aid training from Doctors Without Borders. We have medicine to stop bleeding, for toothaches, for colds and sunburn. This way we're able to administer first aid. Before setting out to sea, Shamsuddin is always equipped with life jackets and food. He never knows when he might come across a boat full of people in need. Sometimes we come across a broken down or lost boat. The people on board are exhausted and ill. They might have been 10 or 15 days at sea with little to eat. They're often sick. One time I brought a hundred or so migrants to the port. Among them was a woman who'd given birth in the dinghy, in the middle of the sea. But since his arrest, Shamsuddin is even more determined to help those in distress. He says fishermen are the first victims of European policies, increasingly restrictive regarding illegal migration. Our arrests showed there are countries in Europe that don't want us to save lives. This makes us even more determined to do so. Indeed, saving lives is required by law of the sea, to which fishermen are no exception. In Zarzis, the National Coast Guard faces a similar dilemma. Authorities are not only responsible for preventing illegal migration, but also for offering assistance to those in need. In a new patrol boat, Captain Mehdi Jagiram is keeping watch along the coast. Under the law, we are required to save people at sea and all kinds of boats, including those of fishermen, migrants and anyone in danger. In 2018, the National Guard of Zarzis prevented nearly 55 attempted departures to Europe, a total of 426 individuals, including about 60 leaving from Libya. Migrants still dream of living in Europe. It's making our work increasingly difficult. They do not cooperate with us. Often, they do not want to return to the port and don't accept our help. Instead, they say they're going to complete the journey or die trying. Between pressure from Europe and rescuing lives at sea, Tunisia faces a dilemma. The country strictly refuses to become a platform of refuge for asylum seekers. Still, it remains a transit zone, and for Tunisia's fishermen, setting out to sea is not what it used to be. Beyond saving lives, fishermen are forced to navigate political instability in neighboring Libya. Munir gazes at the vacant spot where he usually keeps his boat, which has been held in Libya for the past eight months. The currents were very strong that day in the area where we were fishing. That's why we crossed over into Libyan waters. They caught us and we were arrested. We still have no news either from Tunisian or Libyan authorities. I'm trying to contact my crew by telephone. They're in prison in Libya. Munir sought support from the Zarzis Fishermen Association, founded by Shamsuddin and his colleagues in 2014. Munir, like many others these days, is afraid to head out to sea. Libyan militia are known to kidnap fishermen for a ransom, while Libyan coast guards can fire real bullets if a boat gets too close to the border. Now when I get ready to go out to sea, my son grabs onto me and begs me not to go. We're all afraid of getting shot at by Libyans. But we've always been fishermen. We don't know what else to do. Now we're afraid of both sides, Lampedusa and Libya. We're threatened by the war in Libya and threatened by Lampedusa's migration problems. 
In 2018, nearly 2,260 people died at sea attempting to cross the Mediterranean. Countries like Italy have refused entry to NGO rescue boats. In the meantime, Tunisia's fishermen are first-hand witnesses to the dramas that play out at sea.